Hiya, welcome back to my channel. It's Wendy here from Team Pish Crafts and I hope you're doing okay. Now you may remember last week or a couple of weeks ago, I made some handles and I bought some kits and used the handles for the kits. Well, it occurred to me you didn't actually, you don't actually have to use handle molds. You can pretty much use any mold that is a similar size. So I decided to have a rummage through the molds I had. I randomly picked a few out and I'm going to show you how I can, how I used the kits with the random molds. Now, they are examples and the poor bear is a bit unfortunate. He's an unfortunate bear, <laughs> but everyone I've showed him to has creased up thinking it was hilarious. I didn't think of it at the time, but I can see their point. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you enjoy this video. Let's have a look what we can use to go with the kit. So as you saw last week, the kits come with brass tubes. And in order for the resin to stick to the brass tubes, they need to be sanded down a little bit to give it a bit of a rough edge so that the resin has something a bit more substantial to adhere to. Two of the brass tubes are black. Now I ordered these specifically just to save me spraying them black. The others I'm gonna leave brass. And what I'm doing is I'm covering over one end of each of the tubes to give it an airtight seal just with sellotape so that nothing can leak from it. You see, I had a cunning plan and I thought if I'm not using the handle mold, I've got nothing to stop resin going into the tube. So how can I do that? So I've completely covered one end of each of the tubes with sellotape and I'm going to hot glue them upright onto a tile. The hot glue does not like sticking to tiles, so don't use it like that. It's just I needed to keep them upright and I figured that that would be a good idea and it did work really well actually basically just gave it a foot so it wouldn't topple over and that's all I needed. I know this is a really strange way to start a video but it's an important part of the video and without doing this step you can't really do the rest. So I'm going to use some Let's Resin silicone rubber and a little bit of Resinate mica powder which is in Firelight. Now I just wanted to give it a colour so you could see where it was because this silicone on its own is completely clear. This red is quite orange so it's not one of my preferred red colours and I don't actually think you can buy it anymore. So I've made a tiny amount in a paper cup. I've pinched the edge of the cup so that it's easier to pour and I'm pouring it really slowly into these tubes and I'm going to let it cure in there. Now that's my idea for not getting any resin into these tubes and if I do that in theory I should be able to take the silicon out and have a completely empty tube in whatever mold it's in. So that's the plan. Fill up the tubes with silicone, cast the resin around it, and then take the silicone out once you've found the end of the tube. So the following day, I can take my tubes that are now cured off of the tile, and you can see that the hot glue really doesn't stick to tiles at all. I've had trouble with that in the past. I'm going to take the sticky tape off, i.e. the sellotape, whatever you want to call it, and then just give the tube a little bit of a clean so it's ready to go in any resin. I do actually take this tube out to the garage and cut it in half with a hacksaw. So now I have my tubes ready, I need to prepare the moulds in which I'm going to put the tubes in. And the first mould I'm going to use is a, it's a 3D heart mould. I figured it was roughly about the same size. Now this didn't work out as well as I wanted it to, but I'll explain why later. If you saw the Brian video, The Mistakes of the Snail, then you'd see that I was using this red foil and I fell in love with this foil. It is a gorgeous colour. I also got some other colours though, and another colour I got was black and I wanted to try it. So I decided to do a rough red, and it is rough. You can see me taking off a lot of the red with the tape. And try this black foil on top. I mean, I, I'm just like so excited to try these things out. I'm such a big kid. 
So I'm using a soft brush and pushing the foil onto the mould. And I'm just covering the mould. It doesn't really matter if it's uneven or a mess. This is just an experiment to see if the tubes will go into this mould. And if I can use it. Now this is where it went a little bit wrong. I should have put it completely diagonal because I couldn't find the ends later on. Oh well, live and learn. So the second mould I'm going to try is a chest piece and I figured the Queen was probably the best option actually. So I've got the Queen chest piece out of the Let's Resin chest set. It's all in one piece so it's easier to cast. And I'm opening brand new colour to me because I bought the box of 36 colours from Let's Resin and I decided to choose their blue. So I'm colouring the inside of this chest piece mould which didn't need to do really, I could have just used the resin. But I thought I was doing it to the others, so I might as well do it to this one. As usual, everything I use in this video will be linked in the description box below. And if I miss anything, please do write in the comments and get me to put it in because I'm an airhead sometimes. And I'm putting the little black tube that has silicon in it and I'm poking it into the middle to try and get it to centre and to stay where it is. It's nearly the right size, so that's good enough for me. Now, a few months ago, I made some bottle stoppers and I bought a set of moulds and in that set was this one, which is a faceted mould and another one, which is like a diamond. And I thought they were both roughly the same sort of size. Maybe one was taller than the other, but I could use those for these tubes if I didn't put them in the middle because I couldn't stand them up. So I decided to use some quick set glue and stick them at the top onto a stick basically so I could balance that over the centre of the mould. And it was a little bit too shallow so I put some lolly sticks under it as well. Now this is where it goes a little bit on the weird side. I love this little bear mould and I wanted to use it. So I got the shell colour out of the box of 36 colours from Let's Resin and I coloured him completely shell-like. I thought it would be a lovely colour for a polar bear. And I'm going to put black behind it. I didn't actually know whether that would work with this colour. So we'd see that as well. Black is the best colour to go behind chameleon pigments, but not necessarily the best colour to go behind solid light colours like yellow, red and white. I've got the tube and I didn't want to put it through his head. So he had to go through his tail. Yeah. But after all, this is an experiment and I really wasn't thinking about it, to be honest. So now I'm ready to pour resin. I'm going to use the Vista Black pigment for this because it's a solid black and it's silky and I love it. And I'm going to be using Let's Resin resin. Now I do have discount code for Let's Resin resin and it's on the screen. It'll also be in the description box below. So now that I have my brass tubes filled up with silicone, this is quite simple. I'm going to pour the resin like I normally would for each of these moulds and just make sure that the brass tube is in the centre. Apart from obviously the heart because I just messed that one up. I do put these in my pressure pot because I have a pressure pot. You don't have to put resin in a pressure pot. You get rid of any potential bubbles pretty much. I'd just like to say a quick hello and welcome to all my new subscribers. I've had quite a few in the last month, I think over a thousand, so I'm extremely happy that you decided to join me. So you can see the heart is slightly off, the tube isn't exactly in the centre and that's where I went wrong. When I demoulded this heart, I had to sand down quite a lot of the edges to actually find the tube and that meant it wasn't heart shaped anymore. With the faceted gem, I filled it up mostly to the top and then I hung the tube as centre as possible over with the lolly sticks. I knew it was going to be sanded anyway so it didn't matter if the lolly sticks got covered in resin. With the bear I put resin in first before I put the tube in and yes I put it in its tail. I didn't want it going through his head. You get that right? Poor bear. So 24 hours later and it's time to demould and it's pretty straightforward really. I do love this heart. 
It's such a shame I couldn't find where the tube was. Kind of ruined it, just looking for it. Trying to get the chest piece out is always a bit of a struggle, but with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, it definitely works. I know other people use soapy water and that works too, but I did get slippery hands, so I ended up taking my gloves off and then I could get a grip on the mold then. Now I did pour a little bit more resin in this chest piece when it went into the pressure pot and it did cover up where the tube was. So I knew I'd have to sand it down, but I didn't mind that. I knew where it was. It was in the bottom. With the faceted gem, took off the lolly sticks and again with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, a lot of squeaky noises. Demolds really easily. And I can actually see that tube. So I just need to sand that bit down. And the poor bear. Yes, the poor bear. I know where the tube is. It's in his tail. And now I just have to cut the tail away to find it. Now I thought I'd show you how I get the silicon out of the tube. A little pair of tweezers, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and it comes right out. And there's your tube with no resin in it, ready for whatever kit you've got. And I'm just going to sand the bottom off. Again with the chest piece, it wasn't quite in the centre I'm afraid. When I poured a little bit more resin in there, it did push the brass tube over a little bit. But it's okay. The silicon comes out really easily. And because this one went right to the end of the mould, I've got a tube right the way through. That was so simple. Now the bear did take a little bit more effort. Once I'd actually found where the brass tube was, I then had to cut quite a lot of the tail area away to be able to fit in the piece that I wanted to, to use it for. I did feel sorry for this bear. I love this bear mould. I can't, I can't tell you how much I love this bear mould. What have I done to it? I don't know. So as per last week, the stitch cutter kits are as easy as pie. They fit straight into the tubes. As long as the tube inside the resin is long enough, they can be turned around and stored safely as well. When it comes to things like this keychain kit, you're going to need to use some kind of method of pushing the pieces in. Now, this one was fairly easy to use a clamp with. Some people have vices that they use. Some people use their lathe. But a clamp will do the job. I wouldn't recommend in hitting it with a hammer though. But this is a basic keychain, but it does look really smart because it's metal and it's solid. And it pops into the brass tube really easily once you get it in the right position on your clamp. Okay, so poor Mr. Bear had to have quite a lot of surgery done on his behind to be able to put this piece in, but it works really well. And actually I did change this out for the ripper rather than the threader because it was longer and it suited him better, believe it or not. So this video was getting far too long and complicated for me to edit and for you to watch. So I did take out the the diamond shaped piece because it was exactly the same as the faceted ball. I also took out all the work that I did to try and find the tubes in the heart. In the end, it was such a mess. I just thought, well, you got to have some failure sometimes, right? These kits though, there's loads of kits out on the market. And I wanted to show you that you don't have to have those handle moulds to be able to use them. So yeah, the heart shaped thing is a whistle. And although it's not straight, it works. The faceted ball was so sweet, but I did think it was missing something. And I wanted to change it slightly, not because of the kit, but because of the way it looked. I thought it was a bit dull. The same with the diamond. Now with the diamond I decided to use my Cricut and cut loads of gold pieces and use that on the diamond and I think it's really brought it to life. 
absolutely gorgeous. I love it. With the faceted ball, I decided that I couldn't stick anything on it because it was so tiny. So I decided to sand it and make it look scratched and old. And it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I love it. I think it's great. How cute is that? Don't forget to check out toonpish.com. Some of these bits will be on sale on there shortly. The bear, however, does have a home already. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you've got something out of it, some inspiration or some ideas or anything. Come back and see me next week because you never know what I'm going to be up to. I never know what I'm going to be up to. Have a great week. Happy crafting and bye for now. <laughs>